Hello everybody and welcome back. So now we're into our third example of how to test for equality across multiple population proportions. So as our third practice problem, I'm going to go through this one a little more quickly just so that you have a better sense of the flow of going through this type of problem without as many breaks for me talking about things. Okay, so here we're looking at a local car dealership. They're interested in determining customer satisfaction and brand loyalty. They sample owners of three different brands of vehicles and ask whether or not they're likely to buy the same brand when they purchase a new car or shop around. So here we have our observed frequencies. Here are the total number of each type uh, 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 brand owner uh, that were surveyed and the number of yeses and noes. So first thing that we're going to do here, look at our null and alternative hypotheses. By now, these should come almost second nature. We're testing for the equality across the proportion of Ford owners likely to repurchase GMC owners and Chevy. The alternative, at least one proportion is different or not all of them are the same. Either one of those works perfectly well. Here we're doing this at the 0.05 level of significance. Now, I want to go through and calculate our, our expected values under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. So if the null hypothesis is true, I would expect 293 out of 544. I would expect 54% of car owners would say yes, they're likely to repurchase regardless of the particular brand. And similarly, 46% would say no, they're likely to shop around. And again, that's regardless of the brand because this is under the assumption that the null is true. Now we want to go through and obtain our expected frequencies. So I'm applying these proportions to all of our totals. So I'll start with the yes, 0.54 times 104. This would give me, oh, no, that's a mistake. 0 0.54 times 176. That gives me an expected value of 9504. 0.54 times 168. 9072 and 0.54 times 110. Nope, that's an easy mistake to make apparently today. 108. So those are my expected values under the assumption that the null is true. That's how many yes responses I would expect from those specific sample sizes. Then applying the same across the no, where that expected proportion would be 46% of 176. That would be 80.96. Applying that to the 168 it would be 77.28. And applying that to the 200 would give me 92, okay? Now we'll go through and here again, we're going to calculate the difference between what we observe and what we expect. And then here we square those. And then here we take those squared values and we divide by what we expect. Again, what we expect under the null, um, if the null is true. And these are those proportions that we expect if the null is true. So that first one is 104 minus 95.04. So this gives us 896. And I'm gonna square that. And I'm gonna divide that by the expected value, which is this one here, 95.04. And that gives me 0.845. Now I'm going to move on to this one here. So that's 79 minus 
This is 1172. I'm going to square that. 137.36. And I'm going to divide by 90.72. And that gives me 1.514. Now we're on to the Chevy, so that's 110 minus, so here we are over here, minus 108. Of course, this is 2. This is 4 divided by that expected value, 0.037. Now moving on, so again here we can take advantage of this pattern that we saw in our previous exercises, where I know this next one is going to be negative 896, and this is going to be 80.28, but then, of course, we have to remember that on this step, we're dividing by the expected value, which is different. So I don't want to, I don't want to make that mistake. So I'm going to make sure that I highlight that I'm dividing that by 80.96. Oh, and something did go wrong. 8.96 squared divided by 80.96, and that gives me 0.992. This next one, I know that's going to be 1172 squared is going to be 137.36. But now I'm dividing it by this next expected value, 77.28, 1.777. And finally, the last one is going to be negative 2. That's still going to be 4. And now I'm dividing here by 92, 0 0.043. Well, for four, I suppose, if I'm being very careful. And now I'm going to add all of these together. And that's going to give me my chi-squared. So I'm going to just add up, starting with that last one that I calculated. So plus 1.777 plus 0.992 plus 0 0.037 plus 1.514 plus 0.845. And that gives me my chi-squared of 5.2. Finally, we've got our, our test statistic. Now, of course, our degrees of freedom k minus 1. Once again, and this is only for simplicity, once again I only have three categories. Certainly we could have more than three categories, but when we're doing these by hand we keep it simple. Keep it to three. We have two degrees of freedom. So we're doing this test at the 5% level of significance. So I'm going to come down to my chi-squared. And my test statistic was 5.2, so I'm in between here. My p-value is in between those two. Recall this is an upper tail f test, um, upper tail chi-squared test. And so here I have that critical value, 0 0.05. That critical value is 5991. That defines where I'm going to reject and where I will not be rejecting, that gave me an area here of alpha. My test statistic here was 5.2. So certainly if this region is equal to 0 0.05, well, this region is greater than 0 0.05. And that's confirmed here when I see that my test statistic lies between those two values, my p-value is between 0.05 and 0.1. So my p-value here is less than 0.1, greater than 0.05. With my level of significance at 0.05, again, don't forget, that's my level of comfort in committing a type 1 error. Here, if I were to reject 
there's a greater chance of committing a type 1 error than what I'm comfortable with. So we are unable to reject. We have insufficient evidence to show that any one of these proportions is different from the others. Our evidence here supports the null. We are unable to show that at least one of these proportions is different from the other. Which means, of course, in the context of the problem, that we're unable to show that the proportion of vehicle owners changes. The proportion of vehicle owners who are likely to repurchase the same vehicle, it's no different. Whether you own a Ford, a GMC, or a Chevy, we have no reason to show that there's any difference in brand loyalty across those three different brands. Part E, if appropriate, use the Marisquillo procedure to determine where a difference exists. We've already found no evidence of any difference. So, given that we are unable to reject, we already have evidence to show that there's no differences here, it is not appropriate to do this procedure to identify where the difference exists. So, we do not have to do part E. Okay, so that's it. We get it done in just over 11 minutes when we go a little bit, a little bit more quickly. So I hope that that was helpful. You get some idea of the flow of how to go through these exercises. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this has been helpful. Bye-bye.